Hey everybody, it's Super360 here on the go. Uh, well, I'm not quite on the go today, at least. Um, a, a couple of videos back, I did a video about the four things that I love about the Lexus IS300. Uh, I just thought it would be, you know, that thought that it makes sense that I make make one more video about the subject about uh, what I don't like about it because every car has its issues it, it doesn't matter that if it's your favorite car in the world or your dream car like this one is for me uh, this car is one of four cars that I hope to own in my lifetime uh, and um, I thought why not chime in on the things that I don't like about this car? Um, so, let's get started. All right, number one, the center entertainment for this car, the, the center council, the entertainment council. I, I think that's the correct way to say it. This thing, I do not like. I don't know if it's just me or maybe, but it can't be because this is not what came with the car. This is actually, I think the third, if not the second. Uh, but I know that I've changed this between when I first got this car, which was back in 2000 and um, I think two or three. I've changed this multiple times, as in remove the faulty one and put another factory one on there. I don't know why I did it. I guess at the time I, I'm like, well, if this doesn't work, then we should replace it and put put the you know put the OEM back in there. But uh, I don't think this is pretty good because this is not that reliable. Uh, the first thing that usually fails is the CD player it starts to make that noise, that you know winding noise. And then, and then, then you know, soon after, everything else starts to fail on that. And I've changed changed this several times, but now I have a non OEM a screen on there, and it's been working pretty good. I think on average, since I've had this car, I had to replace this about every two to three years, which is ridiculous. So that's this is definitely the first thing that I do not like about my Lexus IS300. Now, at first I thought maybe that is just me, but having to replace this several times, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it's not me, it's just this. It's just no good. So, I do not like this about the Lexus IS300, but I'm loving my aftermarket screen with video and CD player and everything else. I like Bluetooth and iPhone connections and all that good stuff. So, fixed it. On to the next issue. One other thing that I do not like about the Lexus IS 300 first gen is that the amount of power that the engine comes with from the factory. I think it's, uh, what, 215? horsepower and uh, I think 218 pound of torque is well I mean now it does okay I think I mean it's it's not a weak car because I have pushed that car especially when I was in uh, Germany I mean I've, I've really really pushed all of, all of that there but um it's just that this car has the 2JZGE, okay, which is a legendary engine, okay, because there is the GE, there's a, uh, the 2JZG, the and then there is a 2JZGTE. The only difference between them, I think, for the most part, is that one is naturally aspirated G, and the GT is the turbocharged version of it. But it's still a good engine. It's a kick-ass engine, very reliable I know because I've, I've put a lot of miles on this car and still plan to put a whole lot all the way to 1 million um so but this engine has so much potential and I think that uh though it was back in 
2001. It was a while back, but even back then, I mean, it's not that long ago. It's only about, what, 16 years ago this year. I think that they could have released it with a little bit of more horsepower than 215 and just given the type of engine that this is. Because I know that they could have at least released it with a solid maybe 250 or even mm, IS 300, 300 horsepower. I mean, I don't know, but that's the second thing I would say that I wish that the car came out from the factory with a little bit, with a little bit more than 215 horsepower. So, on to pro probably the last thing that I hate about this car because I really had to think hard for this video. All right, the next thing that I don't like about this car is the factory ride height. Well, though I fixed that since, but I guess I could say that when I first saw it for the first time, though I was excited about it, but I just didn't like the right height. And I knew that sooner or later I would have to remove the factory OEM struts and replace it with lowering coilovers, which is what I did. So uh, I can't, of course, you know, show you how the right height was, but it was higher than this, okay? Now I can only fit about one finger in there. But before, I probably probably would be able to squeeze maybe two fingers and a half. It probably would fit between the wheel and the fender. But now I think that the right height is just right. It really looks like a luxury sports sedan. So, the right height, didn't like it. But it's fixed. Well, it's quote unquote fixed. It's the way that I think it should be. So now I like it. So, and I guess there is, there is one more thing. I guess I can say that I don't like about the Lexus IS 300 is uh, it didn't come with a factory lip kit that goes all around like a front lip, a rear lip inside skirts. And um, because back in, I think, what, 2003 or 2002, Mazda came out with the Mazda 6. And that car had, uh, uh, like, your regular non-sport version, but they also came out with a sport version. And the sport version came out, and it looked pretty good. It was, it was fairly low, but, of course, not as low as it should be. But that car came out uh, with a factory lip kit that went all around it. It had a front lip kit, side skirts, and a rear lip. Uh, so I was thinking, how come that Lexus didn't do that? Because this was supposed to be, you know, a sports luxury sedan. It was supposed to be uh, 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 in competition with the BMW 3 Series, and it was supposed to be this whole sport thing. And there's quite a bit of things about this car that is very sporty, but I just thought that it didn't come with any kind of a lip kit. It was just, you know, uh, uh, like, which is why that I absolutely had to get myself a lip kit for this car. A front lip, rear lip, and some decent, not too extravagant or big, but some decent looking side skirts. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you right now. Um, let me get you off this thing. Okay. So all that right there. Clearly, of course, it didn't come with, this didn't come with the car. This was added and fused with the body, uh, front, front lip kit here. I mean, they could have made one for the IS300 straight, straight from the factory. Because, it, you know, because especially when you consider what this car was supposed to compete with and also the intent, which was to bring new and young buyers to the brand. I think that... They only had to do this, but I don't know why. But these are the things that I don't like about the Lexus IS 200. There are a few other things, but uh, there are some other videos out there that are you know, aware that those things were already covered. But those are the things that um, I haven't seen anybody else say about this car that's not good. Well, that I think weren't good. So I just chose to chime in and say what it is that I didn't like about it. But, uh, but that's it. Well, that's all I had for 
this video um of course justice league is coming out in less than a week and i'll be doing a movie review on that and uh because i'm a big fan of dc though i probably don't give any clues that i am a big fan of dc you know i don't really give a clue or anything like that i mean there is absolutely no way that you can tell that I am a DC fan, but I'm going to be doing a Zoom review on that. So that will probably be the next video that comes out after this one. So uh, like, subscribe, and share. This is Zoom360 inviting you to get up, get out, and do it personal development through travel, road trips, adventure, and fun. So until next time, I'm out.